Jalen Hurts was never supposed to become a superstar, but even after becoming a face of the NFL, there's a lot to his story that you don't know about, like his superhuman strength, or being forced off his college football team, and his secret skill. Here are 10 things you didn't know about Jalen Hurts. From the moment he came into this world, Hurts had no choice but to be thick-skinned. His dad was a longtime football coach at Channel View High School in Texas, so he had been around the game his entire life. Before he was even in high school, young Jalen spent countless hours with his dad and the Channel View team, sometimes jumping in on drills. By letting his son participate at such a young age, and considering how special father and son relationships are, some people would assume that Coach Hurts would play favorites with Jalen, but it was actually the complete opposite. Jalen was held to a higher standard than any of the other players, and his dad would rip into him in front of the team if he made a mistake or wasn't playing well. Rather than getting upset or letting this have a negative impact, he took it like a mature adult and would use it to elevate his game. Even now, as an NFL player, Hurts hasn't changed his ways. Referring to his relationship with his current head coach, Nick Sirianni, Hurts last season said, I've been telling him all year that I'm a coach's kid. Basically, all the coach's kids out there know what that means. Hurts added, In high school, I lived with the guy that was chewing me out. I made it clear to Sirianni all year. You know, you can get on me a little bit. And looking back at Hertz high school days under his father's watchful eye, Hertz put up numbers in more than just football that made people stop and do a double take. He was a quarterback that was nearly impossible for defenders to bring down, and he had the weight room to thank for it. Competing at a Texas high school state powerlifting meet as a sophomore in the 198-pound weight class, Hertz came in second out of 85 lifters by squatting 500 pounds. But Hertz wasn't satisfied with second place, and he understood how much powerlifting could help him on the gridiron. So he kept grinding and putting in countless hours of work in the weight room. At a meet the following year, he somehow bumped up that already extremely impressive number up to 575 pounds while also benching 275 pounds and deadlifting 585 pounds. For context, during the University of Alabama football spring testing before Hertz's freshman season, there wasn't anyone on the team outside of the linemen that squatted more than 555 pounds. Here's a program consisting of athletic freaks of nature that produces handfuls of NFL players every season, and yet nobody outside of the linemen could squat more than this high school quarterback. But that's nothing compared to what Hertz accomplished as a college freshman. See, Alabama's head coach is Nick Saban, one of the greatest and most accomplished coaches in college football history. And before Hertz's freshman season with the Tide, a true freshman quarterback had never started for Saban or for Bama since 1984. At first, it didn't seem like Hertz was set to change this. Despite a few players lobbying Saban to start Hertz, he was still labeled the backup for the season opener. But late in the first quarter of that game, Hertz replaced Bama's starter and scored four touchdowns in a blowout victory. He was so dynamic out there and showed such a rare level of poise for an 18-year-old that Saban had no choice but to abandon his long-standing ways. The following week, Hertz made history. He became the first true freshman to ever start under sender for Saban. He proved his coach right for believing in him as he led the Tide all the way to the national championship game before falling to Clemson on the final play of the game. But after coming that close to a perfect season and then the following season leading his team back to the title game, Saban made a decision that would shock the world. Coming into the championship game against Georgia, Hertz helped a 26-1 record as a starter, but that night he just wasn't as sharp as he usually was. So when Bama was trailing by double digits at halftime, desperate for a season-saving spark, Saban did the unthinkable and benched Hurts for freshman quarterback Tua Tagovailoa. Tua then led the Tide to a dramatic come-from-behind overtime victory. While it would have been completely understandable for Hurts to be upset about being benched on the game's biggest stage, that isn't who he is. Hurts said, "Me being emotional." What good would that have done to the guys around me? The joy of being able to hold up a national championship trophy and achieve that goal as a team, regardless of how I got there, it's a joyful moment. There are so few people his age who would display that level of maturity in the moment, but it shows how special of a player, teammate, and person Hertz has always been. After serving as Tua's backup the next year, Hertz realized it was time for a change of scenery. He had only one year of eligibility left and didn't want to watch from the sideline as the clock ran out on his career. After deciding to transfer from Alabama, Hertz had his eyes set on two schools, Maryland and Miami. While wrestling with choosing between the two and understanding this was his final chance to prove he belonged in the NFL, he turned to Saban for advice on the life-altering decision. Nobody in college football knew more about getting players to the next 
level than him. Saban told Hertz to consider a different school, Oklahoma. He believed Hertz needed to prioritize going to the team that had the best surrounding talent so that they could help elevate his draft stock. Ultimately, Hertz took this advice to heart and committed to the Sooners. Saban's guidance was spot on, as Hertz had the best season of his collegiate career and proved he belonged in the NFL. But during the 2020 NFL draft, Hertz was totally blindsided. By the time the draft rolls around, top prospects almost always have an idea of when they'll get drafted and by whom. Almost always. Hertz anxiously waited as pick after pick his name wasn't called. Then, towards the latter half of the second round of the draft, he received the life-changing call from a phone number with a 215 area code. When Hertz saw it was coming from Pennsylvania, he assumed that it was Pittsburgh calling to make him a stealer. However, it was actually a different team from the same state that was about to officially turn his dreams of playing in the NFL into a reality. With the 53rd pick, the Philadelphia Eagles selected Hertz. It was a move that absolutely shocked everyone outside the Eagles organization. The previous summer, Philly had signed Carson Wentz to a record-breaking contract extension of $128 million, with over $100 million of it guaranteed. No player in NFL history had ever received that much guaranteed money in a contract, so nobody expected the Eagles to use a second-round pick on a quarterback like Hertz, who was caught just as off-guard by the pick as everybody else. Earlier this season, while appearing on Jason and Travis Kelsey's podcast, Hertz revealed that he had no idea the Eagles were even interested in him. After Philly surprised everyone by drafting Hertz to serve as Wentz's backup his rookie season, Hertz, during his second year, was thrown into uncharted territory for any previous Eagles quarterback. It was time to see if he would sink or swim. Could he be more than just an athletic runner or decoy in the backfield? People would soon find out, as during that offseason, he was named Philly's starting QB and given the reins to the team. With all the weight of the city on his shoulders, Hertz rose to the occasion and led the Eagles to the playoffs. Starting for Philly in a matchup against the Buccaneers in the wildcard round, Hertz, at the age of just 23 years old, became the youngest quarterback to start a playoff game in franchise history. Forgetting the lack of experience, facing the defending Super Bowl champs on the road, and going head-to-head -head with the greatest quarterback of all time in Tom Brady is about as tall of a task as they come. However, that doesn't excuse Hertz's performance on the big stage. In a 31-15 loss to the Bucs, he fumbled once and threw two interceptions. Hertz decided to use this defeat as motivation to find another way to etch his name into Philly's record books. And that's far from an easy thing to do, as the Eagles are a very history-rich franchise that has been around since 1933. But heading into the 2022 campaign, Hertz was a man on a mission, and that mission was to prove everyone in and out of the Eagles organization that he could be the face of the franchise for the foreseeable future. He desperately wanted to avenge the bitter end to the previous season. He had been viewed as a likable guy and a hard worker, but there were doubts about his ceiling as a quarterback. This was his chance to show the world what he was capable of and silence the naysayers. In Philly's first eight games, Hertz made a statement impossible to ignore. He led the Birds to an 8-0 start, which had never been done by another Eagles quarterback in franchise history. And this is a franchise known for its outstanding quarterback play over the years from legends like Randall Cunningham and Donovan McNabb. So to do something that they never could is an extremely special accomplishment. And a huge reason for Hertz leading the Eagles to this historic start is his chemistry with one of his wide receivers that has been years in the making and long predates their time in Philly. This past offseason, the Eagles made a blockbuster trade by acquiring A.J. Brown from the Tennessee Titans. The move not only gave them one of the top young receivers in the game, but also provided Hertz with someone he knew he could count on. Hertz and Brown were both part of the 2016 college football recruiting cycle and heavily focused on by the University of Alabama. Months after Hertz officially committed to the tie, he met Brown on a recruiting visit. The two immediately hit it off, so Hertz went out of his way to try to get Brown to join him in Tuscaloosa. Despite Brown ultimately choosing to go to Ole Miss, he and Hertz stayed in touch and developed a close relationship. Brown said, I think when you run into good people, I think you just try to stay close to them. He was one person that I considered a really good friend who always looked out for me. This camaraderie and trust between him and Hertz is evident every time they take the field together. As Hertz's dazzling on-field play becomes more appreciated every Sunday, he still has some skills the public has no idea about. In an interview with GQ, Hertz was asked to share one fact that most people wouldn't know about him. His response was, I cook the best crawfish that they've ever had. I think I'm the greatest in the game. But the normally modest Hertz didn't stop there. He also said that his crawfish cooking skills are angelic. Coming from someone who never brags about himself, this has to be taken as a fact. Just like on the gridiron, Hertz doesn't mess around when it comes to preparing to make his signature dish. He's got a secret recipe that includes everything from properly cleaning the crawfish to how to prepare the corn for the boil. His passion and skills are the product of having grown up in Houston, where crawfish boils are taken extremely seriously. It's one of many
many aspects from earlier in Hertz's life that has shaped the emerging star he is today.